Hey everyone, this is Ulas. In this video, I'm going to show you how I service my HMT mechanical wristwatch. It's a HMT Kohinoor that is uh, given out to the HAL employees. Now, this watch is a mechanical wristwatch which runs on a HMT 0231 moment or uh, commonly referred to by the watch mechanics as the ten and half moment. Uh, this, this is the standard uh, HMT uh, moment that is found in almost all of the hand winding uh, Jens wrist watches. Now the reason why I service my wristwatch is, uh, the first thing is that the high cost that's involved in getting it done professionally and uh, there are not too many watch mechanics who can uh, repair mechanical watches or service mechanical watches these days and uh, some of them are unreliable as well and uh, uh, more than anything the spares is an issue. Now the spares are not easily available and uh, the watch mechanics they tend to uh, try and find the spares among the scrap movements that they, uh, they have. If they don't have a particular movement, uh, what you're looking for, they say that they won't service that watch. Now, if you are uh, servicing the watch by yourself, you can go out, explore and get the spares that is necessary and you can fix that watch. And uh, more than anything, it's uh, fun and it's a learning experience and I'm a mechanical engineering student. So uh, more than anything, it's a learning experience for me and it's a pride wearing a watch that I've serviced on my own. Now these are some of the parts of a typical hand winding wrist watch, uh, this is from an ETA moment. Uh, please go through these um, names because I'm going to refer them through the video. Uh, some of the names if uh, necessary I'll just uh, tell, uh, mention them uh, as we go through the video. Now I'm going to briefly discuss about the tools used. These are some of the items that I use while uh, repairing any watch. Uh, some of these I must have, some of these are like optionals. Uh, so I'll discuss one by one. Now uh, first I'll uh, I'll start from here. Uh, these are the tweezers, so it is better to have a multiple number of tweezers. Uh, these two are the fine ones that I use to uh, do any sort of repair work. And this is also fine, but I use it mainly uh, to, tip, uh, to dip parts in the solution and also remove it from the solution. And then uh, these are the screwdrivers must have. Uh, it is better to have uh, screwdrivers of different sizes. Um, and uh, I also use a piece of sandpaper to sharpen them whenever uh, the need arises. Uh, the same thing holds good with the tweezers as well. Uh, you may need to sharpen them often. Uh, there are uh, sharpening blocks available, but I don't have one. So I usually use a, twe uh, use a, a sandpaper for that. These are the hands remover. Uh, now this is one kind that is uh, quite easily available uh, where you push the top keep it in there uh, keep it on the hands and then push it down so that the hands are removed and held there and then you can keep it wherever they want i find these more comfortable a bit hard to get but you can just put them under the hands and then uh, just pry them up uh, this cover i use it for the dial protection uh, as i've shown uh, in the video uh, and then it is also good to have some scrap movements for the parts. Uh, I did use quite a few parts from these movements to this watch I'm servicing right now. Uh, this uh, tissue paper, this to uh, drain the excess uh, cleaning fluid or to remove the excess amount of oil that you have put on the movement. Uh, the riveting block or the bench block and the riveting strip, uh, they have come quite handy to uh, do many of the works. Rodico, another must have. Uh, this is used to uh, sort of clean the fine particles that would have stuck to the gears uh, or uh, they also come uh, it also comes handy when you are uh, picking up small parts uh, and then the case removers now they are available in different types uh, this is a case knife that is used to remove the snap type cases again case knives uh, this is the cheaper one you can also get another type uh, which is uh, more used actually, uh, but I find this more comfortable. This is a hard tweezer that I use to remove the case backs uh, if it's a screw type case. Uh, again, uh, the tool that is to be used uh, to remove such uh, case backs uh, is, a, is called as a JAXA wrench, uh, but it's quite costly and uh, even this uh, will do the job. Uh, also, there are uh, certain sticky balls which are used uh, to remove the case back uh, uh, to avoid any sort of scratching. Now the cleaning fluid, uh, mercury is the cleaning fluid that is easily available in here um, but this leaves some sort of residues in the uh, parts so to remove that residues it needs to be rinsed 
white petrol is the preferred chemical but since i'm not allowed to keep white petrol in my home because my parents are quite scared of it uh, i use a uh, surgical spirit which evaporates quite quickly and removes the residues i don't know how uh, correct it is to use this technically but uh, uh, that's done quite good now here you can go a bit creative you can use any sort of a china dish or anything to uh, rinse your parts in but whatever you use it should resist the chemical it should resist these chemicals uh, sometimes what happens is uh, the it may eat away the chemical may eat away the container so be careful uh, in what you use and then uh, the oil again another most essential thing uh, watch oil uh, like this is preferred um, and then uh, this is a moment holder uh, this for the 10 and a half size uh, for hmt uh, gens moment uh, 0 to 3 pen um but uh, if you don't have a moment holder uh, the riveting block may also do good and an oil cup again you can do without this you can put oil on some other uh, surface and then take oil from there but this is more preferred also keep it closed when not in use and then uh, the loup again another very important thing uh, to uh, uh, use smaller parts and also do finer work and then uh, this is pegwood pegwood is usually available um, in a set of about 40 to 60 sticks or something but i just have one stick so i'm using this for everything and then um, toothpicks they come in quite handy where when you don't have pegwood also for smaller work it's very good and tools that are also required now pin wise is a multi purpose tool uh, amongst a uh, lot of other things it can be used to uh, uh, put the crown on to the stem uh, that is the stem would be fixed on to this and the crown uh, can be attached to the stem uh, while using this as a grip uh, now uh, these are the oil pins um, these are the fl- uh, this is the flat ended one now this uh, is used to uh, put the right amount of oil into the jewel now I, i also use it to loosen some of the small screws for example the stud screw and then this is a pointed one now this is also quite useful uh, this is an ohp marker uh it's uh, basically used to just write down uh, when the watch was last serviced whenever you service a watch it's better to note down the date so that uh, you'll come to know uh, when it is uh, last serviced by you now the blowers again to clean uh, small dust particles uh some extra magnifying devices uh, may also be quite useful now the brush is used uh, when um, some of the cleaning uh, uh, solutions are used mercury doesn't uh, require a brush uh, it's stated on the bottle uh, but some prefer to just uh, brush once the brush the parts once uh, it's dipped in the solution and then this is a dial brush just to clean the dial now this is an uh, end cutter or flat cutter as some call it as now it's used to cut the stem off uh, i'm not used it here but it's quite useful again no splier again and scissors multi purpose uh, some uh, watch perp- uh, watch mechanics uh, also use nail cutters for some small jobs now here these are some of the miscellaneous parts that may be useful on a watch now you may uh, for the hmt 0231 moment uh, you'll get balance sets like this this is not uh, made from the company and they're not of uh, very good quality uh, but they're quite cheap so you can use them on the watch they're uh, quite good as well uh, i mean not excellent but uh, it's quite good you may also get um, uh, the balance sets in the box like this uh, this is not from a hmt uh, this is a six, uh, from a 6921 moment now these are the hmt hair springs again not from the company it's uh, made by a company called nova now this can be used if uh, you have a damaged hair spring but if uh, but the balance feel is quite good uh, now again additionally you can have some of the parts stored in a box like this so whenever the need arises you can use them and uh, these are some of the basic tools that is needed you may have to collect more tools as you go and uh, as the necessity arises Uh, now this is the proper procedure to hold a watch screw driver where you, uh, you'll keep your index finger on the top pressing down and then uh, you will rotate the screw driver with your thumb and the middle finger Now this particular watch as i mentioned earlier it's a HL HMT Kohinoor that was issued to the HL employees i found this watch among a pile of other watches in a watch spare shop he was using this watch uh, for the spares now it was missing quite a lot of parts and uh, it ha- it was missing the case back and had a damaged crystal also and the dial was also quite dirty which had to be cleaned now we'll start with the disassembly of the watch 
Uh, now the first step of disassembling is to get the movement out of the case. So what we are going to do is we are going to open the case back. Now you can see here it's a screw type case back there but as I mentioned earlier it was missing a case back and this is the only thing I could get uh, for this watch. Uh, uh, so I had to use a case knife to remove it out. It doesn't have thread there basically. Now we'll have to let down the main spring so that we don't, so that we don't have any problems later when we remove the balance. Uh, since I didn't do that on um, the particular watch I was servicing here I'm showing it on uh, another HMT Kohinoor. I'll just uh, get the uh, crown into the winding position the click will move out of the way then you'll have to push the click uh, out of the way further there is a, a provision for the same uh, i'm using the tweezer for the job and then i'm going to slowly let the crown unwind uh, using my uh, i mean pressing down my finger onto the crown uh, you shouldn't do that um, at a short uh, so that you don't uh, damaging the uh, mainspring and if you don't let down the mainspring what happens is when you remove the pallet lever uh, the watch starts unwinding all of a sudden and uh, you may end up damaging the lever and now here I'm going to release the stem. Uh, there is a small button which I'm going to press down on and the stem is free as you can see along with the crown. And uh, this uh, part box that I've cleaned. Now it's better to use a box with a lot of uh, compartments so that you can uh, uh, store the parts in the same order you remove them. Uh, now uh, I have separated the movement from the case. Uh, for the time being i'm just going to close the case back and then uh, keep the case aside uh, i'm just going to clean that a uh, little bit later uh, um, now uh, this is a turn off size uh, moment holder and uh, that's, uh, that is a riveting block you can use that if you don't have a moment holder uh, it may be quite difficult to get the moment holder sometimes now i'm just going to push the uh, stem back into place i'm just going to press down on the button that i used to release the stem and then push it into place like as you can see i didn't push down on the button but it still goes into the place and uh, once that's done i'm going to align that onto the moment holder uh, there are small notches where uh, the stem would go and two more notches where uh, the dial screws would align to and you can see that i didn't remove the uh, plastic ring around the moment uh, so it wouldn't fit into the moment holder now when uh, once that is removed I can easily put the moment into its place. Now you can see that the uh, dial screw is aligned to the notch that is provided so that I can easily remove uh, those screw, I mean loosen those screws so that I can remove the dial. Now I'm going to do just that. I'm going to just loosen those uh, dial screws enough so that I can push the dial up. Uh, but I'm not uh, pushing the dial up immediately because I'll have to remove the hands before that. I'm just going to loosen them by just a few turns. Uh, make sure that you're not going to remove those screws completely uh, because sometimes uh, putting them back in might be a bit of a headache. Just a few turns and uh, the dial should be free. But before I'm going to remove the dial, I'll uh, remove the hands. Now you can see I have two tools for the job. One comes as a unit and the other one uh, it is a, a tool comprising of uh, two levers which I'll uh, have to put down under the hands and then pry them up. Now I prefer using the latter. So uh, before I'm going to remove the hands, uh, the hour and the minute hand, I'm just going to take off the seconds hand. It can be done with this tool but I prefer using the tweezer for the job. So I'll just use the tweezer and then pick it up very gently uh, and make sure that, make sure that uh, you don't damage uh, either the second hand, uh, second's hand or the dial. Now I'm going to use the ziplock car as a protection uh, on the dial because I don't want to damage the dial and I'm just going to use the tool, uh, keep the tool under the two hands and then just pry them up. It's a very easy job. Now you can see that both uh, the minute and the hour hands uh, should be free and uh, very carefully just use the tweezer to lift them up very gently again don't damage the hands or the dial uh, the dial is quite delicate and uh, since it's a cosmetic part it would uh, look very ugly if it's uh, damaged now i'm just going to keep the hands aside now i'm just going to uh, remove the dial uh, i don't think i have loosened the screws enough so i'll just uh, loosen it by just a few more turns and then um, the dial should be free 
if you don't have a specific tool to remove the watch hands uh, then you may uh, use a very fine screwdriver for the job just pry the screw uh, just pry the hands up with the screwdriver with a flat screwdriver uh, with the dial protection so that you don't uh, end up dam uh, damaging the dial when the screwdriver slips also you can use a tweezer uh, some match i've seen some watch mechanics do that now just a bit of a push from underneath from the screwdriver and the dial just comes off if you feel any difficulty in removing the R hand, that is if you feel that uh, you may end up damaging the dial, you can just uh, remove the dial with the R hand attached to it, so that it comes out with the cannon, uh, I mean with the R wheel. Now I am just going to put the dial inside uh, a Ziploc car, uh, also the dial washer and ha when handling the dial just uh, hold the dial leg, don't uh, you, uh, hold the dial with the tweezer, hold the dial leg and then put it into the Ziploc car. With all the cosmetic parts of the uh, moment right now, I'm going to disassemble the moment. Uh, now, first, I'm going to remove the screw that is holding the setting lever spring in uh, place. It's also referred as the SLS by many of the watch mechanics. Now, you can see that the SLS just flew off. It uh, is held under a bit of attention, so be careful while uh, removing that. I'm just going to put that in the parts, uh, parts box. and then I'm just going to lift up the R wheel and then uh, keep it in the parts, uh, parts box. Uh, it's not held in place by anything else. Next, I'll have to remove uh, what's called as the yoke spring. Uh, now you can see it's a small U-shaped spring. I'm just using a piece of peg wood so that the spring won't fly off. It's usually under a lot of tension and it has a tendency to just fly off and then you may uh, not find it again at all. Uh, so just hold a piece of peg wood on it and then uh, release it from behind the yoke uh, once that is done you can see I'm having a bit of a uh, struggle there doing that because I have lost a lot of such springs so I'm just being a bit too careful with that uh, once it's off the yoke it would be very easy to remove it just use your tweezer and then um, keep that in the parts box Uh, the minute wheel bridge as you can see here it's held in place by two very small uh, screws so use a very fine screw uh, screwdriver for the job and then um, just remove them very gently uh, once you loosen the two screws you should be able to just lift that uh, bridge up and that should uh, free the minute wheel and also the intermediate wheel uh, uh, this intermediate wheel links the minute wheel uh, to the rest of the setting system Just be very careful while handling those screws and while lifting any screw with the screwdriver uh, just hold it just below the head with your tweezer so that the screw just won't fly off. You can see that the uh, minute wheel bridge is now free and then I'll just keep it in the parts tray. The minute wheel should be easy to just pick up with the tweezer. Uh, just be careful that you are not going to break any of those uh, teeth of the any of the gears. Uh, they are quite delicate. That is the intermediate wheel. I am just going to pry the yoke up a little bit uh, with the screwdriver. Uh, just very gently so that I can easily remove it with the tweezer. You can see that uh, it should easily come off. Just like that and then just keep that in the parts tray as well. Okay, once uh, uh, that is done, I'm just going to release the stem again. Now you can see if the stems come off, uh, then um, two of the parts, that is uh, the clutch wheel uh, and the winding pinion, they are uh, very free now. You can just lift that and keep it in the parts tray. Now, it is important uh, to have the stem uh, in the watch at all times so that you don't lose these uh, parts because they are not held in place uh, securely if uh, uh, the stem is released, I mean the stem is removed. Now I am just going to unscrew uh, the screw that is holding the spring of uh, the setting lever. Just going to remove the setting lever along with the spring. Done.
that is the setting lever and you can see that the spring is just pushed into a small notch that is under the setting lever and that projection on the setting lever is nothing but the button that we use to release the stem. Now I'm just going to lift up the movement and uh, tighten the dial screws so that I don't uh, accidentally loosen them further and uh, lose them. They can easily fall off. So I'm just going to tighten those screws uh, until I'm done servicing this movement. Now I'm going to invert the movement holder. It has a separate side uh, with for the dial down uh, position. Now the first thing that I'm going to remove here is the screw that is holding the balance cock in place. Now I'm just going to use the screwdriver uh, to pry the balance cock up a little bit. It is better not to force any of the bridges open with the tweezer. You can just uh, pry them up a little bit. In fact, there are small notches provided for the same reason on the moment. And now you can just lift it up easily with the tweezer. Make sure that nothing is uh, holding any of the parts in place uh, when you are removing them. Now the balance should be kept uh, with the wheel side up. Now here I am going to release the hairspring from the balance cock. Uh, for that, uh, I'm holding it with my hands, not really recommended, but uh, it will do. Now that, now that is the regulator index and that is where the stud would fit onto the balance cock. Under the regulator index, there is a small lock uh, that is holding the hairspring in place. And I'm going to use a flat tipped oil, uh, oil pin or uh, a very small screwdriver to just turn that lock so that the hairspring will be released. It should be turned by about a 90 degree angle. Be very careful not to damage the hairspring at any point. Now if you observe closely you can see a very small screw uh, that is uh, holding the stud in place and that has to be loosened. I'm trying to focus it now. It may be quite difficult to see in the video but uh, uh, this screw has a small notch uh, just like uh, any other ordinary flat screw which uh, uh, using a very small screwdriver or I prefer using this flat uh, tipped oil pin and then I'm just going to loosen that screw. I've seen some watch mechanics do that with the tweezer as well but uh, I'm not very well versed with that. Uh, you'll just have to loosen the screw by very uh, few turns. It's a very fine screw. You, you may have a lot of difficulty putting it back in if you uh, take it out completely. Now I'm just going to uh, push the stud down so that the balance will be completely free. Now that is the balance cock and the balance uh, set as uh, some call it as which uh, is completely separated now. I'm, go I'm going to concentrate back on the moment. Uh, I'm going to remove this uh, screw uh, that is holding the pallet bridge in place and if you notice the screw is shorter than the screw that is uh, uh, holding the balance. Now that is the pallet lever and you can see that the moment is unwinding now that is because I hadn't unwound this particular moment. Uh, as I did show earlier in the video on different watch. I'm just going to let it unwind completely. Uh, this is really not recommended. It is uh, better to unwind the moment before you touch the uh, pallet lever. It should uh, stop unwinding for me to continue the work. Now I'm going to remove these two screws which is holding the barrel bridge in place. I prefer to put the screws into the same compartments uh, in the parts box uh, with uh, their respective components. Now that screw holds the ratchet wheel in place and that is a right hand, I mean uh, that's a left hand screw and unlike a right hand screw, uh, to unscrew the screw you'll have to turn it in the clockwise direction. And once that is removed, uh, I'm going to remove the crown wheel, even that has a, a left hand screw. 
be careful if you uh, just uh, unscrew it like a normal screw i may end up sharing that uh, head off that is the crown wheel uh, i'll have to remove that if you observe you'll see a very small ring uh, that is in the middle of the crown wheel which you'll have to remove as well now the crown wheel runs around this particular ring here Uh, next, I'll have to uh, remove the click spring. Uh, I'll have to release it that's, uh, from that small notch there and then um, even this has a tendency to jump off just like the yoke spring. And now I'll have to remove the click. Now removing the crown wheel and the click is uh, left to uh, your decision because some, prefer to, uh, some watch mechanics prefer to just keep it on the watch and then clean it. Even that should be fine. Um, the click is removed now. With all the parts of the barrel bridge, I'm just going to lift the barrel bridge up. I'm just going to pry it up uh, uh, with a flat screwdriver and that should easily come off. Now I'm going to lift the barrel up from its place. We'll have to disassemble the barrel uh, further and that's done a bit later. Now I'm going to remove the two screws that is holding uh, the train bridge in place. Uh, the screws may be a bit uh, uh, tough to remove sometimes, you may use a, a bigger uh, screwdriver, I mean a larger screwdriver uh, with a smaller tip uh, for that uh, uh, purpose. And all the gears uh, that are under this bridge, they have very fine pivots, so while removing this bridge be very careful. Uh, so that you don't end up damaging any of the pivots while handling them or while uh, removing the bridge. Now, for that reason, I'm just going to pry this bridge up very slightly. Then once that's done, I can just lift that off. You can see that the gate train is exposed now. First, I'm going to remove the fourth wheel. Then the third wheel. Uh, then uh, the escape wheel uh, that is under uh, uh, the bridge that is uh, covering the center wheel so be careful re while removing that and I'm going to unscrew the screw that is holding the uh, for the center wheel bridge in place you can see again it's uh, kind of uh, hard to remove the screw with some effort I should be able to remove that screw And off the video, I did lo loosen the screw a little bit using a larger screwdriver. And uh, I'm just going to place that screw in the part box. Now just lift that uh, bridge up. And then keep it aside. Now uh, there are only two major parts that is remaining on the moment right now that is the cannon pinion and uh, the center wheel. Now the cannon pinion is uh, pressed on to place. Uh, now it is directly connected to the center wheel. So I'm going to use uh, the same tool that I used to remove the hands. I'm just going to pry the cannon pinion up a little bit. You can use a screwdriver for the job as well, but be very careful with any of the tools. You may end up breaking some teeth of uh, uh, the cannon pinion. You can see that the center wheel is free now. And the moment is uh, completely disassembled uh, right now. As I mentioned earlier, I'll have to disassemble the uh, mainspring barrel furthermore. Um, now please note uh, which side has the cap on. Uh, it should be easily noticeable and with that side up facing me, I'll just uh, press down on the gate teeth uh, just with my finger, uh, with my uh, nails or uh, with a tweezer and the barrel cap should easily come off. Be very careful that the mainspring is uh, always under tension and may just fly off into your face. Next I'll have to remove the arbor. Uh, for that, I'll just have to twist the arbor and then tilt it. And then I'm just going to uh, put the arbor in the parts uh, box again. And if the mainspring flies off, uh, it, you may lose the arbor. Now I'm just going to remove the first turn of the mainspring. And then I'll have to walk it out. That is, I'm just uh, holding it with one finger. Uh, I mean the thumb of my right hand and then the thumb of my left hand. You can see that the mainspring just comes out uh, because of the tension it has. We'll have to walk it out completely. 
and uh, at this part uh, you should be able to realize if your mainspring is set that is uh, if it is not willing to come out then it may be a good indicator that uh, you'll have to change the mainspring now the mainspring is completely out of the barrel and uh, that is the mainspring barrel it may not be really necessary but i prefer to remove the crown from the stem while cleaning so i'm just going to fix the stem uh, onto the pin wise and then i'm just going to uh, hold the crown and then uh, loosen it from the stem you can see it's uh, easily separated and i'm just going to remove the stem from the pin wise and uh, store it uh, aside for cleaning 